Yes, we have an isotope of carbon here. Okay, so we're going to ignore that because that is not uh, increasing the mass of our molecule by one. That's just um, that we've been able to detect this isotope of carbon and, um, and see it on the spectrum. Most of the time, your spectra have been cleaned up to remove them, but you need to be aware that it could possibly be there. So, um, if, it, if it's a bit taller, if it's like that, then that, that one would be the N+. Plus. Because we're looking at maybe a height difference of, um, there should be about 1%. Be, um, a nice term. Um, now I think it's probably a good time for you to have a bit of a practice and see how you go working through your questions. Let's start on page 58. And there are four different spectra for the analytes. understand the physics behind how or why that is what the x-axis is measured in. But it makes sense if you like uh, in, in one sense that we're, we're always increasing the mass along here. Okay, so that's what we're, we're um, looking at. Now, 
Nobody can stretch in a couple of different ways when it's excited symmetrically, asymmetrically, and it can be And it's these stretching of bonds that we can now see in the infrared spectrum. Because those bonds are only stretch with a particular wavelength of energy. Uh, you can see there that um, on page 60 there's some examples there of the, of the um, symmetrical and asymmetrical stretching and wriggling. This table in our booklet is also on your formula sheet. And so that is an important thing for you to locate on your formula sheet. Now I think it's on the same page as your flow chart. Is what we're going to be looking for a particular stretches. Now again, with our um, x-axis, it's got a strange unit called a wave number and it's measured uh, in one on a centimeter. Uh, we're not going to worry about how that's derived or anything like that again, um, but that's our, um, our x-axis. And our y-axis is an absorbance um, and most of the time ours are uh, drawn in this way where have strange things that happen in, in this region. It's called the fingerprint. And we don't do anything with it. Okay, that's on the right hand side. What we're interested in are areas where our functional groups will cause a stretch in or cause an absorbance in the spectrum. This would be an alcohol stretch. Um, so if we're going from normally, normally going from um, somewhere in that region, it would be an alcohol stretch. We can think of this as a peak or a trough, it doesn't really matter, but it's a place where there's been a strong absorbance of energy from, that's been added to our molecule. And if it happens in this region, then that tells us it's a hydroxyl absorption for an alcohol. Is, is smooth. We're just going to shape here. 
Whereas if, if there's not, not um, a high proxy present and you just have a hydrocarbon, then we'll have a pretty raggedy looking absorption in that region. Okay, so don't think because it's absorbing there, it must be either the hydroxyl for an acid or an alcohol. If it's got this jagged end on it, then it's carbon hydrogen there. And then we can just have straight out just the um, carbon ion stretch. And the way we are going to differentiate between them is by checking the wave number. So you've got that on your formula sheet. What I would recommend you do is when you're looking at the scale, find those values and um, look to see is, is there something present in that region. So for our carbonyl group, we're talking about 1780 to 1650. You locate them on the scale on the x-axis. And is there a, an absorption there? Yes, and the carbonyl is present. Okay, don't just look at the shape because you can also get yourself a bit confused if it's um, yeah, you know, if you're getting a bit confused and saying this one here. If it's a carboxylic acid, we need to have both of these absorptions, don't we? You need to have the carbonyl and the hydroxyl, and this needs to be a broad absorption for carboxylic acid. If it's just an alcohol, it's going to be a narrow uh, absorption in the correct region. And this one could be for an aldehyde, a ketone, and an ester are all going to absorb here, aren't they? Because they all have single one row. So this could be an aldehyde. This one could be an alcohol. And this one's an acid. And this one here is a alcohol. Does that make sense? That that's all we're looking for. Are positions of the absorptions using the scales given on the formula sheets. And the reason why they're occurring is because those bonds are being excited by the heat energy that's being added.
Let's check this question 56. It's a true to have some infrared spectrum to uh, analyze. 